हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल आई होप यू ऑल आर हैविंग अ गुड डे टूडे टॉपिक इज ऑन आइसो क्वान सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट स्टार्ट आवर वीडियो आइसो क्वान इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टूल ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन थ्योरी एंड आइसो क्वान रिप्रेजेंट्स ऑल दोज फैक्टर्स ऑल दोज फैक्टर कॉम्बिनेशन विच आर केपेबल ऑफ प्रोड्यूसिंग द सेम लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट Suppose uh, we have two factors of production, that is labor and capital. Okay, so the isoquant shows that any combination of these two inputs or these two factors of production produces the same level of output. Isoquant is basically a curve. Okay, so what it what the isoquant tries to show is that any combination of the labor and capital will produce the same level of output throughout the isoquant curve. so this shows that the producer would be indifferent between any combination of input because ultimately the output the units of output produced is same so therefore the product producer remains absolutely indifferent between any combination of inputs which is why the isoquant is also known as an production indifference curve it also has a name it is uh, it has got another name that is also known as equal product curve here we have taken two factors of production labor and capital which are shown in x axis and y axis of the diagram respectively here isoquant is the here iq is the isoquant showing the various combinations of labor and capital which produces the same level of output that means point a and point b both have different combinations of labor and capital but both of them produce the same level of output let's say that output level be 100 units so here we have an isoquant map an isoquant map consists of various isoquants in this particular diagram we have four isoquants they are namely iq1 q2 q3 and q4 okay so each of this isoquant has a specified level of output that means each isoquant produce shows a specified level of production of output okay for example here in iq1 it iq1 depicts that 100 units of output is being produced with each subsequent isoquant which is higher to the previous one it shows that the level of output that has been produced also increases that means higher isoquant produces higher level of output we can also um, give a number to it we can quantify it that is q2 suppose produces 120 units of output q3 produces 140 and q4 produces 160 units and a very important concept related to isoquant is its slope the slope of isoquant the slope of isoquant is known as the marginal rate of technical substitution which we also write it as mr t s it is very similar to the concept of mrs which is the slope of indifference curve marginal rate of substitution right so the marginal rate of technical substitution indicates the rate at which the factors can be substituted without changing the level of output so why do we need to substitute the factors it is because we we have to remain in the same level of output therefore the rate at which one factor is substituted for another right mathematically it is written as change in k that is change in uh, capital divided by change in labor that is your mrts we can diagrammatically we can show it like this this is delta k this one is delta l so an important characteristic of marginal rate of technical substitution is that it diminishes as more and more of labor or even capital also 
basically when more and more of any factor is substituted for the other factor suppose here we take that suppose labor the amount of labor is increased and capital is reduced then what happens is that as the quantity of labor used is increased as the quantity of labor used is increased okay here as we move from here to here the quantity of labor is being increased so the quantity of capital employed is reduced now the amount of capital that is required to be replaced by an additional unit of labor so as to keep the output constant will diminish this is known as the principle of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution let us now go through the properties of isoquant the properties of isoquant and indifference curve are almost similar if you have not watched our video on indifference curve you can check it in our channel the link of the video has also been provided in the description okay so the first property here is that isoquant has a negative slope that that is it slopes from left to right it slopes from left to right it has a negative slope this happens because when we reduce the quantity of one factor say labor okay so the quantity of the other factor capital is increased in order to uh, maintain the same level of output production okay so therefore this leads to the isoquant having a negative slope now our second property of isoquant is that two isoquants do not intersect each other okay suppose we have two isoquants okay this particular isoquant produces 20 units of output and this one produces 30 units of output let this be point b okay we have already discussed that each isoquant produces a specified level of output but here at point b it is showing that it, it produces both 20 and 30 units of output which is kind of absurd hence proving that two isoquants cannot intersect each other and the last last property of the isoquant is that isoquants are convex to the origin okay they are convex to the origin it is because of the operation of diminishing marginal rate of substitution so it is a marginal rate of technical substitution so it is because of this reason that isoquants are convex to the origin